Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be creating our blend space for our mage as well, because we created one for our warrior. Uh, just because we're in the area and it sort of uh, makes sense to make it now and it will not take as much time as the warrior one because we have a lot of stuff already done. Uh, but essentially we go to our character folder, we create a new folder, we call it uh, mage. We duplicate our third person character, or not duplicate, we uh, make a child class out of it. And we'll call this one uh, bp mage class. We'll save and put it in the mage folder. And in here we'll create another blend space. And we can actually do it this way. We can go to the warrior and we can duplicate the warrior one and call this one BS mage. Then we can move it over to the mage. And the reason for this is because they're using the same skeleton in, in my specific case here. So we can save some time. Uh, we don't want to have any of these uh, blend spaces that we currently have here, so we can just get rid of them. Um, but all the other settings that we have are settings that we want when it comes to the movement and the naming conventions and everything like that. So we'll just get rid of these dots for the animations. Like so. Then we get our walking ones. So we have walking left, we have walking right, and we position them just like we did the other one uh, for the warrior. So walk forward, and uh, walk backwards is here, run right is here, run left is over here, run forward over here, run back over here, and then we have an idle over here. So looking at our character now, we can move around holding down shift, we can see how it blends between different things, and it looks okay. So that's all good and fine. And now we have our blend space for our mage essentially done. So now we need to differentiate between the two classes that the mage has one blend space and the mage has another one. Uh, since this is going to be unison between all our characters, we will just create this as a variable in our base class. So we'll call this um, class uh, blend, let's call it walk blend space or something like that. Uh, we will choose the class type of uh, blend space, uh, not the 1D one, but the other one, and an object reference, and compile and save. So for the base one, we can have it blank. It's perfectly fine. For the warrior class, we can go here and we need to show inherited variables. And we find our blend space and we make sure to choose our warrior over here for that one and for our mage which we do not have open right now we open that one up and we change the blend space to be the mage one so now they have different blend spaces that's all good and fine uh, but they also need to be applied on the character uh, and we can do this by making our animation blueprint a little bit more dynamic when it comes to this. So here we can create a variable as well, which we can call our locomotion blend space. And we can make this of a blend space type again, like so. And in our, let's see, animation graph here in our uh, default state machine in our idle run we currently have our blend space for our warrior always going we can remove this one by the way um, and that is all good and fine since we are sharing skeletons now we can actually make use of the same animation blueprint and have different locomotions being set up so what we can say is instead of having it set up like this we can go here to the bind and we can say expose as pin which gives us a blend space to actually input here. So we can input our blend space that we have here and the blend space will be dynamic depending on uh, what we are using. We can also set it as a default if we want to, I think, uh, like the warrior. So we see that it has some, some blend space, actually it didn't take warrior and then apply 
and then compile and then save like so. So this allows us to actually set this variable in the animation blueprint and it will change the blend space that it has, which can be useful for things like in our case classes, or it could be useful for something like if you have different uh, blend spaces for different weapons and stuff like that. So each weapon would have a blend space that you can just transmit to uh, the animation blueprint. Uh, so in our base class on our begin play, for example, we can make use of this so we can get our mesh and we can say we want to get our anim instance and our anim instance is the, in this case is going to be a generic uh, anim instance uh, so what we can do here is we can create an interface so let's go to our interfaces and create one called uh, let's see blueprint interface there and call this bpi set uh, local motion bs open that up we'll make a function called set local motion bs which will have an input of the type blend space object reference and this is the blend space that it is supposed to be making use of so we go to our animation blueprint we implement the interface by adding it BPI set locomotion BS compile save we implement the actual function or event in this case and we say we want to set the locomotion to be whatever blend space we're getting sent in like so and going back to our third person character now we can say without having to cast we can just say set loco BS and the blend space that we're sending into this interface is going to be our class walk blend space. So to test this out, if we have our character now in play, nothing is working at all. Uh, that is, of course, because we have a third person character here. So that's actually good that we didn't set a default for that one. That way we know that it's not working when um, when we are using a character that's not supposed to be used. But we want to try this with our warrior, for example. So choosing our warrior, right-clicking on our character, replace with warrior class. Uh, we might need to make sure that we're actually possessing this one. We're possessing player two, excellent. So saving, playing. Now we have our warrior here and we can do our blend space. We can see that our opponent, however, did not get a blend space because it is of the third person character type. But let's test out to see if the mage works as well. So we'll replace this with the mage class. And you can see here auto possessed by player is disabled. So make sure that it is zero. So we get this character. And now you can see that we have the blend space for our mage blend space locomotion. So now the different classes will have different locomotions based on that. Um, we can also make, we can actually change the opponent here to be of the type warrior class. So it actually has an animation so it looks a little bit better. And we'll change ours back to be the warrior class as well and make sure that we are player zero taking over that one. That one is disabled. So it's looking fine for the opponent and it's looking fine for us now. So that's all good and fine. Now that we have two characters or two classes created here, we can also play around a little bit with their default settings. So when we go to our third person base class, for example, we can say that when it comes to the starting abilities, it should not have any. So we'll just delete those so it doesn't have any. And then we go to our warrior class and we can say your starting abilities is supposed to be for example, the ability slash on one key and the multi slash on another key. And the mage should hopefully be empty as well. It doesn't have any abilities yet. So we will be coming back to the abilities of the mage at the later points as well then. Uh, but yeah, for now, then we have created a locomotion blend space for our warrior and the locomotion blend space for our mage we have started setting up a few of the abilities for the the warrior and we will be moving to create some more for the mage soon as well but now we're starting to get sort of like a, a base foundation for some inheritance of our characters uh, now in this case of course i'm using the same skeleton between the different ones 
you might have a slightly different setup when it comes to the characters. You might have characters with completely different skeletons. Then you can't, of course, follow exactly how I've been setting this up. Uh, but you should probably be aware of that by now anyway, since you, you know of the setup that you do have. So you'll have to do a little bit of uh, other changes uh, when it comes to that. But um, as far as it comes for dynamic blend spaces, you can still have that within the same skeleton. If you have like a character that has multiple weapons that it moves around differently while using. Uh, so that might still be something that is... Uh, useful for you to make uh, make use of in your uh, development anyway uh, enough ranting i think this is good enough for now i hope to see you in the next episode hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future that is all for now keep on learning take care